farming. This is the 17 acres that we're protecting and enhancing. If we didn't do this project, we would lose all of it in the next 25 years. This project helps create uh, wildlife and fisheries habitat uh, for um, crabs and shrimp and fisheries. Uh, uh, these, these are their nursery. This is where they grow up and those species provide uh, forage for, for bigger fish in, in, in the bay or for, or for human consumption. Uh, there's, a, there's a great economical benefit here. Uh, it's also um, uh, birds and wildlife utilize these, these areas as well at, uh, as an uh, area to forage and, and roost and reproduce. And also it um, provides water quality uh, benefits to Dickinson Bayou here. The watershed that we're in is Dickinson Bayou and it will help clean the water and these, uh, these marshes help cleanse the water as it, as it filters out into Galveston Bay and uh, provide shoreline stabilization against the erosional forces from wind and tidal influences that may erode away the shoreline here and, and reduce the habitat for, for the future. We're going to be taking borrowed material from the channel and putting it um, in these cells in front of this area. That will protect this area while it settles and then we'll be putting seeds and then plants. We'll plant the levees with the Marshmania volunteers and CCA volunteers. And then uh, we'll try to, once the, the bottom settles to the right elevation, then we'll plant it. But in the meantime, these seeds will provide a, a good jump start. It's the first step. In order to protect shoreline, there's gotta be plants available to protect the shoreline because those plants root themselves in the sediment and those roots help hold the sediment in or hold the sediment together and protect it against wave action and wind and everything like that. Uh, animals coming in and uh, trampling on the, on the ground itself. The shoreline at the particular project site is only uh, is if we've lost 36 acres of wetlands and then in addition to that, we also um, are losing ground with the existing shoreline and the marsh that's there. We're losing about nine feet per year, and that's a lot. We're building uh, a 10-acre marsh in front of a 17-acre marsh, so we're protecting and restoring and enhancing a 27-acre marsh. The purpose is to protect the existing marsh and to create new marsh where there used to be marsh and also improve water quality. Smooth cordgrass seed, um, we monitor it. It's usually starting in the beginning of October, and we look for seed ripeness to know when to harvest the seed. Uh, once we look at it under a microscope and see that it's time to harvest, we'll get volunteers to go out and help harvest the seed. And that's what we've done today is, is harvest some seed for uh, this year's uh, plantings or seeding. Uh, we'll take the seed back to the lab, and it'll sit in a tubs for about two weeks or so and uh, we'll put seven dust on it and uh, put a little mo uh, moisture on it with a uh, spray bottle or a watering can and that just keeps the, the seed moist from drying out. Uh, and then after it starts shattering off the stems, we'll go through and thrash that seed and take it off of the stem and then we take it, make our own salt water and we place that into the salt water in tubs and put it in the refrigerator um, uh, probably in the next two or three weeks and then we'll keep that seed in that water uh, until the end of February, beginning of March, and that's when we actually take the seed out to a uh, site to uh, actually seed the site. There's a, a clear liquid stage, there's a milky stage, and then it goes into the, a soft dough, and then finally a hard dough stage. And we usually start collecting at between the soft and hard dough stage. Usually uh, 50 to 60 percent of the seed are actually viable and depending on the year, uh, the germination rate may be anywhere from 30 to 50 percent of the actual viable seeds. But there are uh, about 750,000 seeds uh, per pound of seed, so there's a lot of seeds that we collect. Uh, we usually collect about 100 pounds per year, so that's a lot of good viable seed. Today I think we figured we collected about 8 tubs, and it's about a little over 2 pounds per tub, so about 16 to 18 pounds of seed today. I am just helping out as a volunteer 
under Jan Culbertson, who I work with at Texas Parks and Wildlife. I, I like to get involved in, in events like this. We will also be uh, coordinating and recruiting volunteers to come help plant uh, this restoration site after it's constructed uh, to establish the, um, uh, the native vegetation that will hold that sediment in place. We typically do marsh mania events in the spring and the fall. Um, or anywhere during the growing season. So whenever the construction is finished, uh, which is Texas Parks and Wildlife's project, uh, they will give us the notification, go ahead and start planning a volunteer event to plant the site with volunteers. Hopefully the ideal um, time will be fall 2014. I definitely think the fishing, uh, the recreation opportunities improve with marsh creation um, uh, projects like this, uh, what, and, and in general, uh, coastal, coastal uh, restoration projects, whether it's oyster reef or, or marsh creation, marsh restoration, uh, fishermen often uh, target in on those areas, and the response there is pretty immediate. You know, as, as soon as we've had some planting events where you, you come and you plant live, live stems in the grass, and almost immediately you're seeing uh, finger mullet and uh, pinfish and shrimp in the marsh uh, where you didn't see them uh, before you'd put the, put the marsh in the ground. So, so a pretty immediate response. I think the biggest challenge for most of these projects is funding. Uh, funding is a major issue that we run up against. Uh, these are expensive projects. Um, fortunate, uh, we have uh, great project partners like Coastal Conservation Association, um, corporate sponsors, uh, different federal and state and local project sponsors as well that help uh, combine uh, small pots of funding into a larger project fund that can uh, accomplish some significant things like this, like this Dickinson Bay project. U.S. Fish and Wildlife um, and Parks and Wildlife joined forces to get the original engineering plans done. And then we have NRG Eco Center, they donated plants. And then we have USDA who is out here today with us collecting seeds for the project and other restoration projects. Um, we also have NOAA has assisted us with funding and TCEQ, uh, Texas Com Commission of Environmental Quality, uh, Galveston Bay Estuary Program. We've had uh, Extension Service, uh, Sea Grant. We have the General Land Office has been funding us. We also have our best project partners, uh, Coastal Conservation Association has been funding us. And so we are joining forces right now to gather all the funds together to do construction of this marsh. And we are hoping to start it pretty soon. We've hired Ducks Unlimited, who's another project partner, to do the engineering. And we also hired some geotechnical this past summer. All of these valuable partners join forces together uh, Galveston Bay Estuary Program as well as Galveston Bay um, Foundation have been helping us all along the way to try to get this project to go forward. And one project partner is so valuable is Malego Exploration. They own the property out here. We've all been wonderful partners and I think we're all going to benefit from this project. I know this plays a real integral part in in actual conservation, coastal conservation and restoration. 